this is the Middle Ages. Now, going far, far back into the past, we have the earliest pipes that we know of that were dug up in 1929 by Sir Leonard Woolley. And this is a recreation by a man named Ben Hume in New York City. He went down and studied the original pieces of these pipes that were buried with Queen Puabi, Ninchabur. Uh, she had a bunch of different names, but uh, uh, 4,800 years ago, she passed away and 40 of her royal retinue were put in the grave with her after they were sacrificed. And that included her piper and her harper. So by virtue of the fact that these were made out of silver and not just regular plant material like the Sarandodonax, they came down to us, but they had been broken. And there was actually two sets. And um, they were broken to send them into the next world with that piper. So one type of reed plays an almost a major scale. Let's see. And this side here plays a chromatic scale because the reed's slightly different. Now I can um, make reeds that play both of these pipes equally in tune with each other, but I kind of like the idea that I can get two different scales out of this. And uh, somewhere in the middle of this scale is something that blends in with this. So these were common throughout the ancient Middle East. Uh, the Hittites played them, the uh, Phoenicians played them, uh, the Babylonians, uh, Akkad, Akkadians played them. Um, the ancient Hebrews called them Halil or Ugav, and they were played for the harvest festival that just precedes Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year. Uh, they call it Succus, and you make a booth and you give thanks to the Lord for a, a bountiful harvest. And so it says, He has not heard joy who has not heard the Halilim play for the festival of Sukkoth. So this is a uh, kind of universal uh, ancient reed pipe of the ancient Middle East. In Sumeria, it was called Gigit, which meant reed long. 